keeping up with the Commodore, because the Commodore is keeping up with you. The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Flash Gordon is the 1986 game based on a comic strip character from the 1930s. And later, a movie of the same name, released in 1980. The Commodore 64 version was released in the US under the title Captain Zap, with all the other names like Ming the Merciless and Prince Baron being changed. This was probably to avoid paying the big royalties for the Flash Gordon character names, or perhaps Mastertronic only had permission to use the Flash Gordon characters in Europe. The game features three individual levels. The first is set on the jungle world of Arborea, in which Flash Gordon has to traverse through the jungle-like maze to escape. The second level is a beat-em-up style in which Flash fights Prince Baron, which was changed to Prince Gorham in Captain Zap. The final level is a 3D style shooter, which has Flash flying a rocket cycle in pursuit of Ming the Merciless, or Tog as it was known in the US. You know the story behind the game, Tog, whatever his name is, is going to destroy the Earth in 24 hours time, and it's up to Captain Zap to invade his home planet and kill him before he can turn our planet into nothing more than ash. There's three stages to the game each with its own controls. One hour game time is one minute playing time, so that means you've got 24 minutes to finish the whole game. Not bad, but that means you've got a very short game on your hands. So let's hope it's worth it. Let's dive in. The forest is based on unstable ground, and in certain places the earth has broken away causing crevices to open up their gaping jaws. Flash, being an agile sort of block and possessing a powerful spring in his legs, can clear the gaps without too much trouble. During your travels, Flash encounters apes that leap down from the trees, snakes which hang in wait, and skeletons of people previously killed in the forest that are now seeking revenge. Not to mention fire-breathing dragons and the treacherous tiger who guards the exit. You must shoot at these with your trusty gun, which is plagued with limited ammo, however, which can be replenished from trunks that litter the forest floor. Throughout the adventure, Flash's life depends on the time remaining, and the more attacks you succumb to, the quicker the time passes, represented by a small clock at the bottom of the screen. Getting lost in this level was a massive downfall, and the little map in the lower left of the screen is as useful as an underwater hairdryer. Once you've managed to decipher the maze of the jungle and defeated the tiger, you immediately stumble on one of Ming's minions, who you recognise as Prince Baron. You need to earn his respect and attempt to make him an ally. Promise me if you kill me you'll team up with Voltan and fight Ming. But first, you must beat him senseless in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The state of play in this epic struggle is depicted as a tug of war below the two fighting figures. Whoever pulls the centre bar all the way to the edge will be the victor. The third and final sector of this adventure sees Flash on his jet bike hurtling across a gridded landscape. In order to build up speed in this section, a number of flying guards need to be eliminated. Having survived the onslaught of guards, Flash now finds himself flying through a minefield. All you need to do here is steer a clear path through without touching anything as each contact with the mine depletes your energy very quickly. Once you've negotiated the minefield, you catch sight of the dreaded Ming flying past on his rocket sled, and you must eliminate him quickly as his retaliation can be fatal. Once the swaggering dictator is destroyed, then our hero has done it. Done what? Save the Earth, of course. Remember? This retro epic was not half bad, despite being played in three sections that have only a tenuous link. The controls are hard to get used to because they change a lot, and sometimes what you have to do at certain points isn't very clear. It's also an incredibly short game at only 24 minutes long. But hey, you make do with what you get. The graphics are pretty good on the whole and the sound is really great with the brilliant Rob Hubbard title screen music and in-game soundtrack. 
But, as always, you don't need to take my word for it. What did you think of this game? Let me know in the comment section and don't forget to hit that like button. I gratefully appreciate your support when it comes to these Commodore videos and kindly ask that if you enjoy them, then please hit subscribe. I'll be continuing on this journey for a long, long time. So, let's get on board the nostalgia train and on that note, here's another video that might just catch your eye. Coming up next. See you there and bye for now.